Edgar Schein is a social psychologist who has come up with a raft of fascinating and important ideas about organisational culture. I've already made two videos about his two biggest ideas on the subject, so this video is something of a summing up of the man and also a way to introduce some of the other ideas that he has given us about organisations and organisational culture. Edgar Schein was born in Zurich in 1928, but his family moved to the United States while he was young and he studied social psychology at the universities of Chicago, Stanford and Harvard. After four years serving in the US Army, he was invited to join the Sloan School of Management at MIT by Douglas McGregor. There, he became a professor in 1964 and chaired the Organisational Studies Group from 1972 to 1982. He remains an emeritus professor to this day. Edgar Schein's work is deeply concerned with organisational culture and its relationship to things like behaviours, motivation, management and leadership, learning and career development. But we're going to focus on a couple of the less known aspects of his work on organisations and organisational culture. Schein sees culture as the dominant force within an organisation. He defines it as a pattern of shared assumptions that control almost everything we do within our organisations. Things like how we relate to one another, how we perceive things like truth and falsehood, the balance of task and relationship oriented behaviour, and how we seek to fulfil ourselves through our work. These affect the values that we hold, how we behave and the social norms that we see in place within our organisations. His best known book is Organisational Culture and Leadership, which was published in 1985 and captures all of his big ideas. In the last 35 years, it's gone through a number of editions and is still available today. But it was in an article called Organisational Socialisation and the Profession of Management I'll put a link below, that Shine looked at the way that we can integrate with an existing organisational culture. Drawing on a term that Lewin had used, and we've got a video on it, he said that you need to unfreeze your prior social and cultural norms before adopting the new norms of behaviour within the organisation that you're joining. However, when we join an organisation, we do feel a pressure to conform, and he drew upon experiences from the Korean War and attempts to brainwash American soldiers in describing the three different ways that people respond to a prevailing organisational culture as they enter that culture. The first was rebellion, a rejection of that culture's norms and a holding on to our own pre-existing social expectations and value sets. Secondly was creative individualism. This was a selective choice from among the new social norms that are available and adopting some of them whilst rejecting others. Not surprisingly, the third response is conformity. It's a willingness to adopt all of the social norms, the values and the beliefs of the prevailing culture. Another idea of Shine's was that within any organisation there are a number of prevailing management cultures which will coexist and will compete with one another, often in an unhelpful manner. Part of the goal of organisational learning, therefore, is to find ways that people can integrate all three elements of the organisational culture and make them work together effectively. The first of these was what he called operator culture. This is the culture of the local operating units within the organisation. He called the second one engineering culture and recognised that engineers and technicians' primary focus is on seeking the best optimal solutions to any problem. As a result, people within the engineering culture are often mistrustful of colleagues who come from other roles 
that they might think of as softer, who are driving what the engineers see as unhelpful agendas. And thirdly, there is the executive culture. And not surprisingly, this is populated by people whose primary objective is to maximize profitability. Their financially driven decisions again compete with local operator needs and engineering culture needs. Obviously, the organization that can bring these three forces into harmony so that the pressures for financial success, for optimal engineering solutions, and for solutions that work locally is going to bring the organization the best possible results. Organizations, of course, need to learn how to balance those three pressures. And of course, they are also subject to constant change. So organizational learning is the third topic that Shine addressed, which I want to cover in this video. Organizations thrive when they learn quickly and adapt to new situations. But that learning is frustrated by fear among employees and managers within the organization. And that fear is what Shine labeled as anxiety number one. Anxiety number one is fear of change and of learning how to cope with the new situation. To overcome anxiety number one, we need to present people with a second anxiety. Anxiety number two is the fear that if we don't adapt to the change, if we don't learn new ways of doing things, then we will become overwhelmed by the change and we will quickly start to see failings in the organization, which threaten not just the organization as a whole, but us personally. But Shine also observed that a culture of fear is not a productive culture. It can lead to rigidity of thinking and sluggishness in itself. His solution was to make learning part of the culture. If we can overcome anxiety number one by creating a culture where people are encouraged to learn, feel free to learn, feel confident to learn, then they can be constantly learning ahead of the pressures and the drives that create anxiety number two. An organization where people can feel comfortable with conformity, where the three managerial cultures can coexist and integrate effectively, and where people feel confident and enthusiastic about their learning is going to be a successful organization. And it's one we should encourage. And I would also encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to take a look at our two videos about Edgar Schein on organizational culture. They are both valuable and they each represent one of his two major theories about organizational culture. Please do give us a like if you've enjoyed and learned from this video. I'll be making loads more great management courses content, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss anything. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and in the meantime, keep learning.